Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 293. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 285 to 294. Hey, in this trick, we have a column of words, and we want to count unique words. The problem is the complicating factor. We've seen how to count words or numbers, unique words or numbers in earlier videos, but now we want it to be dynamic. So as we add new words below, the count will update. Now we're going to do a couple things. We're going to have to find uh, the last row in this data set. Uh, we're going to have to figure out the height of the data set, including any blanks that might occur. Then we're going to have to use a name and the offset function to create a dynamic range. And then we'll do uh, our count unique uh, words of formulas similar to formulas we've seen before. First, the last row. Here's one way to calculate the last row. Equals max. And we want to allow any blanks in the data set itself, but we don't want to count all these blanks below here. So we're going to say in parentheses. Now, you could do it a few ways. Um, let's say you're never going to have more than a th 100, right? So you could just go down to, to say, to 196, 166. I'm going to hit the F4 key. Whatever it is, you could even highlight the whole column if you want, which is people do. And I'm going to say this has got to not be blank. So we have a set of true false. If I highlight this and hit uh, F9, you can see it's a bunch of trues and falses. It's huge because it goes all the way down. You can see up here the trues, trues, trues. It hits that false, that first blank. Oh, but then there's another true. That's important to how this is going to turn out. The uh, As long as there's a true after any false, we'll still get the last row. Control-Z. And we're just going to multiply that times rows. Uh, row of this same range right here. The row function will tell us, will just give us the rows, right? So for us, 21 will be the last one that it finds uh, a, a true in. So, and this will give us all the rows from 12 to 166. Now I'm going to close parentheses, and then this is an array formula, so I'm going to Control Shift Enter. 21. 21. Now that's going to give us the last. Uh, row, but really for our offset function name, we need the height of this. Now we could do this in name inside of the the, the name dialog box in front of it, but I'm going to do it right here just to make it a little bit easier on understanding it. Hey, I'm going to take this uh, last row right here, 21, and I'm going to subtract from it what? Row of the header, right? So right now, it'll give us 21 minus 11, which is 10. Uh, well, what is it? I think it's 10, right? 21 minus, yeah. 10. 10, which is how high our data is. 10, including that blank. Now, before we can do our formula for count unique words, we need to uh, do our formula in the as a name. Now, in 2003 and 2007, the keyboard shortcut that works is Control F3. Control F3 opens name manager or define names in earlier versions. I'm going to click new and see if I can um, scroll down. Actually, I'm going to click cancel here, close, scroll down just a little bit. Control F3, scroll this up whoop, so you can kind of see what's going on. All right, I'm going to collapse this right here. Click in, um, oh, I'm going to click New. There we go. That's why it wouldn't work. I'm going to click New. Right now, um, we've got our name manager. I'm going to click New. See if I can come up here like this. Now, I want a uh, short name here. I'm going to say UCW for Unique Count Word. That's our name. And then I'm going to name this, all right? I'm going to use a formula for our name equals offset. Now, what does the offset function do? Uh, do? 
it does a couple things. One thing is that it can f define a range of values. Now, there's five arguments. The first argument is where do you want to start? Hey, I want to start right here because that's where the first piece of data is. Comma, the second argument is from that starting point, do you want to go up or down any rows? No, I want to stay in B12. So I put a 0. Comma, the third argument is from that starting point, do you want to go left or right? Or right or left as it may be. No, I want to stay in B12, so I put a 0. Comma, the fourth argument is how tall is your data set? That's where we got our 10. Comma, the last argument is how wide is it? Hey, it's one column wide because we only have one column with words. Close parentheses. Now I'm going to click OK. And now here's the trick that I always immediately do when I have a name like this. I'm going to click that button. And sure enough, it'll show you the dancing ants marching around. And if it, if it got the right range, then uh, you'll see it dancing around the right uh, range of values. I'm going to uncollapse that, click Close. When we add a value down here, if I add something like that, Control F3, come here, and I'm going to immediately click that again. You see it should pick that up, and it did. All right, now we're ready to go on our formula. Now we've seen this one before, equals sum product. Now we have a couple conditions we want. Now we need to check and see if it's a word, because we have a number here that we don't want to count as a unique. Before we get to our uh, count if one di divided by count if formula that does the the unique counting, so we're going to do is text is text. If only I could uh, <laughs> type is text, and we're going to highlight. Oh no, we have a name. I forgot my name, so I can't type it out. So what do I do? I hit the F three key. F three is paste names and I got WCM. I should be able to remember that one. But that's the first test and we'll multiply that because that'll give us a bunch of trues and falses. Multiply that in parentheses and this is the count unique part. 1 divided by count if and the first argument of the count if is the range. We hit F3 and double click our name or type UCW comma, usually for criteria we have a single value, but here we want all of the values. So in essence, if there are one, two, three, three rads, I'll uh, hit F3 and double click point to put that in. Right now, it's got a range. It looks through all of these. There's a rad, a rad, a rad. But by putting the whole same range here, you'll get a series of numbers. You'll get three for this, three for this, and three for that, which means there's three threes. But when you divide, one divided by three, one divided by three, one divided by three, that's one third. When you add them all up together, it gives us one. So that's a clever way that, that one divided by count if, whole range for first argument, whole range for se second argument. That's a clever way of uniquely counting. Now I'm going to close on the one divided by, and then uh, close parentheses and control enter. Ah, we got to divide by zero because it's looking at that. No problem. We'll hit F2. And actually, at the end of the second one, we can ampersand a blank like that. That converts all the values to text, and it has us, helps us to avoid that divide by zero error, error there. Control Enter, and we get five. Now, one other um, complicating factor, if you had a formula that could evaluate to blank like this, it would be counted there. The way you could get around that, and again, if you only have words and no formulas, you just have words, this formula is fine just the way it is. But if you did have that formula evaluating to blanks, then in parentheses, you could do another series of true falses. And you'd simply um, paste that name, F3, and say not blank. Now I'm going to multiply. So now we have this extra condition, and that will get rid of that. When I control enter, you can see it, it is avoiding that formula that evaluates to blank. Usually, for, you don't see a formula like that, but you see like a big if or something that would deliver blanks. Uh, the only other thing about this is you could replace all of the um, multiplies here with commas. 
and uh, control enter and it would give us zero because then we need to put our double negatives and you see this and this actually can be faster so we need double negatives there these are a ones here so when we do that we control enter it gives us a five those double negatives for huge columns of data data will actually calculate fast now let's control enter and test it and see if it works I'm going to add a new word down here, kips. Enter, and it looks like it got the six. Let's add another one, a duplicate kips, and it looks like it, uh, oh, it still has six. And then a rad, it's still got six. Um, and then it looks like it uh, got seven. So it appears to be working. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.